Hi, Lee. Hey. How are you? Uh, good. I'm good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> going to be a busy day but, but I'm, I'm okay i'm good yeah i had a couple of uh deadlines due with o'reilly and finally hit them i hit the deadline so that feels good um it always gets a bit stressful trying to get words on paper quickly nice all right well i went ahead and, and started the recording um let's go ahead and talk. Um, there's a couple other people who are in the dock right now, but um, who aren't on the call. I ex I'm assuming they'll, they'll join shortly. Um, so speaking of the document, we have a new meeting minutes um, doc. Meeting minutes. There's a link to it in the chat. So, um, Drew, we were just saying we, we've got a new meeting minutes doc, which you might have access, or you, you have access to. I put a link yep. to it. <coughs> nice. Um, well, in here, uh, a few topics. One is uh, we can start on, as Mukul is on, and so is Tanuj, who's been working on this. Um, a little while ago, we were discussing um, the notion of moving, of consolidating repositories. Um, so moving the layer five NG code into the layer five repo, um, which had been kind of the more or less like the, the plan all along that uh, the, the the layer five NG repo is kind of a temporary holding space for us to become familiar with Gatsby and try things out. And, and it looks like we're, we've got a theme, we're able to build it, we're customizing it. And so I figured we'd, we'd move that back over to the layer five repo. So it's in the, the layer five repository now, thanks to new. And there is um, a, there's two Netlify sites set up, one to build the, the current layer five site and another one to build the um, next gen layer five site. The, of what you see inside the layer five repo, it's um, all of it is the current site, except this folder, which is the next, you know, the next site. And so um, McCool, we were just chatting a little bit about building the layer five NG site. And, and so do you, uh, so right now, you you were talking about hey, the need for um, a GitHub action to help build this um, NG site. Yeah, yeah. GitHub action work for the whole repo. Then we have to add that GitHub action for the layer five. I was asking for the access token to be added as a secret. That secret will be used to push the build code. The action you mentioned, I think will be working fine for building this the site now we have. Nice, good. Okay. Yep. So, the... so then then I will open the new PR for this. I will open the new PR for the action for this. Nice. That makes sense. Do you know did we were we successfully building the new site from that workflow? No, because uh, I, I was not able to test from Netto's you sent in the group, but it should work fine. As far as I think, because there's not so much any complex thing there. Sure. It builds it, it builds the site in in the site folder. The action, the action runs in the site folder and we have to add a GS access token because the same name should be mentioned there. Then then the when when I the action will be added then it should work fine. Then we can have a look at the logs and 
then we can check if it's working fine or not. Huh. I will return with them. Okay. So then, um, to news of the Netlify site that's set up for layer 5 NG, um, is that pointing to the site folder underneath the layer 5 NG folder? This this one is actually the one for the layer five ng inside the layer five. Nice. Okay. And so that's good. Um, of how it's configured, do you know? Will does it does it point to a, a site folder underneath the layer five ng folder? For the layer five. Uh, this doesn't contain a site folder because we removed the theme docs. Oh yeah, say that last part again. You said it, it doesn't have a site folder. We can use the... Uh, I removed the site folder because that was previously there because we had separate documentation for the Appian theme. So I removed that part and pulled everything out of the site folder. Oh, okay, got it. So, so you're saying, um, hey, look, when the the way that the the way that the new Netlify Netlify site is configured is that it's going to be pointing to this repository or this directory right here, expecting to find the the whole site, right? Yeah. Okay. And so, I think okay. And then of what McCool is saying, so McCool. If as you yeah, move the, I, 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 I want to know where, where the source of the site is because this, this action should be done in the source folder and there we had a packet.json file this action uses that packet.json and then it will run then it will do everything automatically we have nothing to do afterwards only thing is that we have to create this action and then run into that folder where the source is uh, okay. and it, it, it automatically fetches it automatically check out the repo using that checkout action I used cool. and then and then it uh, used that access token to authenticate to push the build on the master and then we have to enable the settings that for the GitHub pages, and it will automatically deploy to GitHub page. And there, there are a lot of configuration options also. We can, if we want to change the master to another branch, like GH pages branch or something else, then we can change change, and a lot of things else can be configured. Okay, that that's very helpful to have those those different configurations. So I guess that brings us back to Netlify of the way in which we have this configured. Tanuj, do you remember um, what directory it's looking for the site in or where it's deploying the site? I guess, yeah, that's, that's maybe this is a bad question, Tanuj. Um, so just maybe to refresh my memory, um, the Netlify, we're just looking for it to do site previews. So, so long as it retrieves from the correct source location, it's going to build the site, deploy it into a space that um, Netlify runs. And beyond that, we, we don't care so much about, any, I guess, anything beyond that, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Which is good. So that means that probably the Netlify builds, have they been working at all, Tanush? Yeah, it's working. Oh, are they? Nice. Yeah. Like on maybe if, if we took a quick look at like a recent pull request or something that might, I guess I just had this. Will, this will not work because the changes are not happening in that directory, so it is not building a site. This is oh. for the layer NG, layer five. Cool. Where's the control for that? Um, is that 
down in Netlify? It, uh, it automatically detects some fake. If files are not changed, it doesn't build the site. Oh, okay. Huh. Okay. All right, then sounds like we'll, we'll probably be okay. We might be okay with the default uh, settings for the GitHub action. I guess, I guess we'll see. Um, I, uh, I guess it, like if we were to, if we were to say, Hey, where would we want for the site to be built? Um, and, um, deployed, uh, so right now we're going to be have, heavily l relying on Netlify for what those previews look like. We're going to be building locally and looking at the site there at the point by which we think we're ready to switch over from one site to the next. Um, that's when we would manipulate um, either switching to a different branch as being the published branch or like refactoring the site such that all of the old layer five stuff is shoved into a different folder while the new layer five, the next gen stuff is pulled out of this folder and made maybe at the root. So I guess when, when we get there, we'll, we'll have a couple of choices probably. Yeah. Nice. Okay. All right. Any, any questions from anyone on that, that we were just kind of talking about the, the builds, the previews, the mechanics by which we'll switch over. Hey, I don't have doubt about that, but I was looking into Strappy right now and I found something interesting. They also have a plugin for Jekyll too. But the problem is that plugin only supports, it does not support Jekyll 4, which you are currently using. So if oh. they, if either we uh, downgrade to Jekyll 3.8 or something, or they upload a new version, we could easily have a central point for our blog and we can like filter out according to the tags we have for each blog to all of, uh, suppose you have a central database of Strapi where you put all your blogs, then it also has tags about which, what it is about, mesh free, CLI, whatever it is about. Then Accordingly, we can give access to different websites like meshree.io or the new website we are building. And according to that, they can fetch from the main strappy backend itself. If we are able to downgrade to Strap, uh, check a 3.8 or if they upgrade their plugin to 4. Nice. You, and, and Dhruv, in your mind, would that... Oh, would we connect up Strappy to Jekyll 3.8 or to for purposes of use of, of migration, like using Jekyll as a data source for as a temporary thing? Yeah, exactly. Right now we are using Jekyll as a temporary thing for the products or individual projects we have rather. So Right now, the blogs are a bit scattered. The one which are in meshu.io won't show in layer five, or you have to re we have to re reproduce them once again in the layer five doc itself. So if we just migrate all of them to strap itself, then we can have different clients having access to different articles in itself, or we can make them all public and let the uh, website decide which article they want to show. Actually, there was an issue someone raised in 2019 in that Jekyll Strappy plugin plug that it was not supported for four, but they didn't respond. Right. Yeah, because yeah, four has been out for a little while. So let me let me regurgitate maybe what's part 
part of the potential value for us here. Um, maybe two. So one being as like right now, I think one of the things that Tanuj has taken a look at this last week is uh, how it is that we can set up our current markdown files, like our current blog posts or project pages or whatever, our, our content, and use and set up Gatsby such that that content is, or Gatsby is treating those markdown files um, as a data source, I want to say that it's a file system plugin, I guess. But in Tanuj, we can well, let, that's a t let's talk about that in a minute. Maybe you can take us through that. But but this strappy support of Jekyll could also also be useful in that way. That um, one for purposes of migration, that we could um, point Strappy to to our Jekyll site as a data source, pull in the content, kind of have it displayed in the new site. Uh, which is, you know, it's a good note to make and it's interesting. Um, maybe what's even more intriguing is uh, the thing that you'd said, Dhruv, which is, hey, between docs, dot, between the docs, from, between the three Jekyll sites that we have and potentially soon to be fourth from um, Shridi and Muskin, that through Strappy, we could have um, one set of markdown files leveraged as a data source across the multiple sites. And that, that's intriguing and that, that can be really helpful. Um, there's a few areas where it's been a little bit, it's not, it's not, not painful, it's just been a little bit annoying that, um, that we have, Community members is an example. Uh, we have a data, um, a set of information about community members defined in Markdown on the meshery.io site. And then we wanted to have some of those same members and their profiles on the layer five IO site. So we had to duplicate the, the Markdown. It's the same thing for um, meshery adapters. Uh, I think the adapter information is stored three times. Um, so one is here on layer 5.io that explains Meshery. Another one is on Meshery itself, or Meshery IO here. Another one I think is on the you know, docs.meshery IO. And, and it's not like it's the end of the world. It's just, it would be convenient if, uh, and I Everything think- was updated ones together yeah yeah it will we'll get into yeah i mean because at some point like we may even want if we get far enough along it would be ideal if some of this was automated like like th this that what version we're supporting of the ser of a service mesh really that should be defined inside the adapter repo for uh, inside the repo for one of each individual adapter we should be able to read from there and say that's a little bit advanced and, and we if it's hard we won't we don't need to work on that but point being is like <clears throat> that yeah we could benefit from now uh drew if, if that's the case only the sites that how how would that work for the the, the, uh, the different jekyll sites that we have today if we're trying to leverage one set of you know um, collection of jekyll markdown for adapters for example if those are in one repo how does strappy help us get that to the other sites well probably what we would need to do is we need to make one more admin account for uh, each of the repos which will upload or change the data rather of that particular component, let's say the component is adapters and which stores different type of adapters and we link it with a tag, which if you want a tag I don't know, to segregate them, not in this case, but in case of blogs, I think. And then, yeah, basically then our Jekyll site would fetch data from it. If we have a webhook, then they will know whenever something has changed. 
yeah basically that's how it should work yeah that's pretty cool yeah that that's quite helpful yeah that's exactly what yeah um, there's a small bug on this table that i just took a snapshot of and uh I will create an, I'll create an, it's right here. This, this dot is extra. You can create a quick issue and um, Ruth, some of the other contributors will, I suspect, jump all over it. We've been lucky with having a number of new contributors that want to take on those. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, they're being taken on pretty aggressively. <laughs> um, Okay, good. Uh, so, Drew, uh, I guess you know since since we've got you talking and kind of on the subject of Strappy, do, do are there other things that you want to share around things that you've learned about Strappy? Um, I can't share, but I can't share it properly right now. It's just messing around with stuff. I don't know exactly where each code line is to tell you guys how it works. But. Sure. We can do it at last if <clears throat> sure. everything is done with. Yeah, and you guys, and you, Tanuj, and um, Dhruv, and maybe Josh, too, I'm not sure. You guys all have exams this week, right? Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. okay. I'll, I'll try to finish the, the note here, but while I do, there's a, there are these other four topics. Um, Shridi, do you want to talk about this one? Uh, sure. Um, so we are setting up SMPS website. The theme has been decided. We haven't actually gotten very much done with it at the current moment, so there's nothing to show. Um, yeah, that's it actually. We're working on it. Nice. And the, that theme is if uh, people want to check it out. Uh, I'll add the link to the meeting with it. Yeah. Cool. All righty. Progress. Nice. Um, I think on this site, there's a little bit of, there's a little bit of content there today, but perhaps not all that that would be nice and so i'm i think uh i probably owe you guys some um more words more collateral <laughs> um i'm sorry yeah, just, You're looking uh, i was just thinking about the conversation we were having where we were talking about collateral so the um uh, provide additional content for the project. Nice. Okay. Um, do, do you guys know any next, any specific next steps or, or any, um, any blockers or? Not currently. It's just a basic site. We don't have much content to migrate at the moment. <laughs> Sure. This should be pretty simple. Okay. Okay. Multiple sites. Okay. Any other comments on the SMPS website? All right, well, um, the next item was uh, Lee was supposed to get Ishida access to Google Analytics. And uh, one minute before the meeting, we did. <laughs> so Ishida, I don't know if you received an email about that yet. Uh, yep, I have. Uh, I've been going through it and there's a few insights which might make sense. You know, there's some user flows like um, from from the starting page, from the landing page, what pages do users visit the most? And I feel like that could help um, decipher some kind of information which we could leverage. So I'm going to check that out. Yeah.
Yeah, it's always interesting to me to see the keywords that land people on the site. Um, some of which are, it's not that they're unintended, it's that some of them, I, I think literally we don't have one or two of those words, and maybe we should. Um, but I think a lot, of, a lot of times people are organically, or when they are finding the site through search term, it seems like a lot of times it's um, in a comparison fashion, like they're like looking up two different service meshes. Or they're, it seems like the, the landscape is kind of some of the content that they're looking for. Yep. Um, and that's probably because when they're searching for other things that we, you know, the landscape is for that. Um, but when they are searching for other things like service mesh interface or other keywords that we have that we rank so low that they don't actually make it there. And so, um, yeah, but that's changing some. And so um, on last Friday's community call, um, Shridi, you gave an update about some of the new content on the existing layer five site. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I did. Okay, do, do you want to, I don't know that everybody was on the, was everyone on, I, I, uh, I think almost all of you were, but do, do you want to say it again? Uh, give it's it all right, I'll summarize. So basically we have a lot of new blogs coming up on the layer five blogs. They are a mixture of experience posts, some posts about what layer five has been doing, some more features, there are a lot more to come. So if anybody is interested in either volunteering to get a post out there or looking to put some content on the Lefi site, please do contact me. This is a great way to get Lefi more well-known. And you can have a look at the blogs we have up so far. I think we had four or five new blog posts this week itself. They are mostly experience posts right now. But they're well written and they are by some of the most experienced members of the community yet. So do have a look and get back to me if you have any ideas about any future blogs or posts. Um, there was a comment from Ruth recently that she was intending to write about her experience. And I, I don't know if that was um, I, I think that she meant in context of the layer five site. So I'll talk to her about it. Nice. Okay. Um, and then um, Shridi, last time we were in transition from last time we didn't have these meeting minutes. Um, mm -hmm. And you had migrated, I think a couple of assignments into issues or assignments from the doc into issues. Um, mm -hmm. I had. Do you re recall? Did were each of them, did, were each of those assigned to someone? I don't recall. Uh, most of them haven't been assigned yet. Okay. Um, let's let's take a quick look at, in the, um, now and see um, who's grabbing these. So, do, do you want to? If I don't know if you have all of the context for what these were. <laughs> if you do, that will be helpful. Maybe you could. Um, I do mostly. I did not have context to the contributing, the one you're on actually. Okay. Actually, um, in some respects, Nikhil uh, took on, I think what this was intended to be, which is to say that today when you, you come here and <clears throat> the convention a lot of times is that when someone wants to contribute, so sometimes, you know, the, the readme will talk about that or maybe point people to um, contributing and and here when we this hyperlink takes you to this contributing markdown right here and the convention is just that you would have a file of a certain name um, in the root directory as a matter of fact github even reinforces that um, convention if you go to insights on any repo um, i think under community they'll give you that repo or this community, if you will, a score saying, Oh, do, do they have a description? Do they have a read me? Do they have a code of con and, and when they have, when they're saying, Oh yes, they do. They're linking, they're looking explicitly for a file of that name in the directory. 
And as a matter of fact, with mm-hmm. code of conduct, it, it needs to be like of that format, like underscore, underscore. So the point is right now, the contributing that we have is for how to, well, how to work with, <clears throat> how to work with Jekyll and what's nice. And so that's fine. What's nice about this one actually is that we say there was something that people were commonly doing and that was updating the landscape because we were pinging a lot of people. Like, can you update the landscape, add, add information about your project? And so it was, you know, specific instructions about certain areas. Um, the, while we will look for people to continue to update the landscape and add news and do things, you know, I'll, you know, add lots of things, blogs and things. Mm-hmm. The instructions by which they build the site will be slightly different. Uh, even the, the like the most of this will be the same. It'll be kind of the same flow, fork the repo, make you know, do do these things. Um, it'll probably still be a make site. But yeah, so so that um I think under the new folder, um, Nikhil had landed a PR not too long ago. I don't know if this is it or not, <clears throat> but he was updating the site build instructions. I think we can take that issue, assign it, assign it to Nikhil and probably close it out because that's what this was. Great, I'll do that. All right, then the next one, identify all React components. All right. So Tanuj, you, you and I had worked on that a bit. How, I, I, um, for my part, I feel like, or I know I put in all of the plugins that I knew of at the time, that that would be helpful. But I also recognize that there's a number of you know, that, that I'm really new to Gatsby. So I'm not, I'm not convinced that this is a, a totally complete list. How about for you? Uh, at the moment, every, uh, this, all this plugin seems to be enough. We are localizing the CSS using already uh, the second plugin mentioned in using currently the markdown, I have sent a PR for that. Uh, we need to decide if we are going to use Strapi now or later because and we need to add a plugin or not for that. Okay. But, um, in that case, are each of the plugins here, these four, have they been, like through, through that PR that you've just submitted, have they all, are they all four of these added already? Not, uh, not the third and the fourth one. Okay, cool. So these are here. Nice. Okay. All right. So on that, on this issue, it sounds like um, Tanush has been putting in an effort, and I did what I could. So, um, Tanush, uh, I had taken it. So, so just. You know, on that PR for the new components or the new um, plugins, at the, it was marked or it's marked with a draft. Are you ready? And so I didn't really review it. Are, is, are we good to review this and consider it now? Or are you still working on it? You can check out the preview link and I need to just ask how what are the things I need to remove from the current? Go to the uh, blogs, uh, blog part. Oh, got it. So you had created, I think, a new single page template? I just pulled it out of the pages folder because it was going to be rendered by the Gatsby dot node file. Oh yeah, say that last part again, because it was going to be rendered with Gatsby what? Uh, Gatsby node.js file. Uh, it is going to create a template of, uh, it is 
it's basically a template and the that file is going to render the template depending on the context of the contents of the markdown file got it okay got it yeah let me go let's go let's go take a look this is a good so, so i think what we're seeing in that preview is success with using the Gatsby source file system plugin to read markdown files um, and then take and apply a template that you have included in here and uh, lay the temp, you know, um, merge the template and the content together. Yeah. Uh, actually, one more thing I uh, forgot to mention, I use the MDX format because it was going to allow us to use the rows and columns already defined in the React. So you can write React basically inside this markdown file. Uh, so th this is an example right here? Yeah. MDX, huh? Okay. Uh, uh, I'm learning something new. <laughs> MDX. And then is that is that sort of all that there is to know about that like hey uh, because of that file extension um gatsby will you know try to interpret it will look for curly braces and try to interpret what's in there as not jackal well yeah, i guess yeah it'll try to interpret that as uh gatsby uh, every uh, other things all will be interpreted as simple markdown and everything written in JSX will be like uh, normal React code. Okay. Okay. Um, I, I spoke of this slightly differently a moment ago. Um, we were saying that the file system plugin is being incorporated in this PR, Gatsby, Gatsby source file system. And it's, you're identifying the path and you know, kind of where to pull in the pages, what template to apply. Um, uh, yeah, which is great. Um, it, it, it's possible right now, which is great. And you've copied over kind of the content of just an example post. Um, it's possible to point that, that path to the existing uh, blog directory, right? Uh, I think so. No, no, I, uh, the problem will be that Netlify will not recognize that folder because it is outside the layer file engine. Got it. Okay. That makes sense. And yeah, long, like long term, um, we wouldn't want to mess it. I mean, there wouldn't be any reason really for us to keep those blog posts outside of the site direct, you know, folder structure. Um, I guess, I, I guess the, the question there, and maybe it's, it's evident from just looking at the markdown here that um, yep, that we wouldn't, we were not really anticipating now that you, now that you've removed all the custom inline styles from the blogs, like the migration process should be really easy, right? There are some tables which are made that I think I have to write that in GSX in this, uh, this context. Okay. Oh, I see. So like the. So we have some markdown tables, or we have some tables that are written in markdown, like, and do those? Some are written in, some are written in HTML. Uh, some, some entire blogs are written in HTML, which are using these uh, div tags, etc. So, like, basically change everything to class to class thing, I think. I see, okay. The H, it's, yeah, it's not, it's not an issue with HTML being interpreted as much as it's an issue with like uh, the style of that HTML. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Okay. And so I guess um, educate me a little bit more if you would. Um, 
um, within this PR, you have like, uh, you've created a, a single page, you've created a template here, I think, wait, okay, you've created a template here called blog single JS. And inside the source file system plugin, you're mapping um, what path you want to um, use as a data source for MDX files. And then you're mapping that data source to the blog post template that this file here. And was the existing template not something or was it not usable or I'm, I'm, it's not that we shouldn't have a bunch of templates or something, but I'm curious, like, um, did you, you needed to create a new template because? No, I didn't create as much means that the template which was, which I have used is, was inside the pages folder. So the Gatsby in, interprets that as, as, as a separate page automatically so i need to take it out from the pages page because we didn't it was also using uh, graphql query to search the markdown file so if that pj page already existed and somebody went there it wouldn't able to find the markdown file and so and other things. okay oh and this uh, no And this is that new template or that new file. Uh, mostly, I think what you're saying is, hey, it's not so much that you created a new template as much as you restruct, you moved it from one location to the next. Yes. Okay. Does anybody else have questions on this? Is everybody else learning alongside here? I don't have a question, but I can help migrate the blogs if you need me to. Nice. Yeah, and and that's um, Sridi to your point. Like that's something that can be done more or less now now-ish because those posts really shouldn't be changing, you know, much. Or like we can. Um, it's, it's not a time critical. It's not like you have to do it within the, the hour that we're migrating or something like the data is pretty static. So, yeah. Nice. Sure. Okay. I'll look into it and I'll get it done. We also need to check the single block page and there are some things I think this, uh, the comment part, is it needed? We are going to use that also. Should I remove that? Got you. Okay. But yeah, let's go back. Um, so here. Oh, yeah. So your point, Tanuj, is like, hey, there's the ability for users to comment on a blog post. Are we going to use that? And, yeah. and my perspective, or, uh, I don't think so. <laughs> I mean, uh, did, yeah, well, let, let me, did, does anyone have an opinion on that? If I'm allowed to, um, this could be a good idea after we have some more posts up, not at the current moment. Anybody else have commentary on comments? Well, oh, if there are something like tutorials itself, uh, Mukul, are you saying something? Yeah, if there are some sort of tutorials or something, then I would like the ability to ask the questions which I have. Right. Yeah. Maybe you've stumbled into an issue on trying to work through a lab. Mukul? Cool. Yes, I will also thank you for the same. Yeah. Good. 
क्या समटाइम्स पीपल कैन गिव फीडबैक ऑन इन द कमेंट सेक्शन और हाउ द ब्लॉग पोस्ट वाज आउट समथिंग दे वांट व्हाट वुड बी द नेक्स्ट थिंग गॉट यू गॉट यू ओके देयर्स देयर्स लॉजिक यू गाइस इज रीजनिंग Okay. Uh good. And and to news any anything else. No, there are some tags we need uh, filtering etc which can be done in later year. To figure that out how to achieve that. Those tags are like you mean like pre, uh, like predefined list of tags that people who are creating posts can choose from. I think so. I, I I don't know why they are there, but uh, what was the point of that? Let's just check it out. Okay, and I think we missed. Is is Shivai still on? Um, I want to talk to him him about mega menus. Okay. Um um maybe Ishida uh we got to chat about Google Analytics for a moment, but um any other um updates or any other topics? Yeah. If you want to learn a few things about Strapi, if no one knows, I guess. Yeah, do I? For sure. Yeah, Ishida, last chance. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I totally do. Yeah, Drew, I'm going to stop sharing, assuming that you might uh, want to walk yeah. us. Yeah. So where are we? Yeah, so basically it start over here. We have certain uh, what can you say users which will uh, have access to our data and can change our data. We can define which users which one we want and which access do they have like uh for publicly we can decide uh if our articles are free to find free to count free to create or free to delete or something like that all of these things works based on api itself if uh for public right now articles and categories are free but if you want like if blog can only be uploaded by certain users in users i mean a particular web website or some client itself then we need to make a authorized account for them itself if you want and we can define what they can do means we have a flexibility over here and in content type builder we can basically define what kind of collection types do we want to have suppose i want a article which has a title content image and it is also linked to one more content type like category itself which can be like tags of which type of article it is they can be joined together and then if we search for category we can all together search for which articles are under those categories if we link them together it's it's pretty simple actually they also have a, a way in which we can define how they are interconnected together one to many many to one many to many stuff like that nice and uh, uh real quick uh, sorry to interrupt but what, what if you go back to that visual relationship diff- manager yep. the advanced settings what's under in the upper right hand yeah yeah advanced settings oh yeah uh it basically if you want in this particular case if you want to uniquely learn or means every uh every relation is unique no wait wait a second is diff- i don't know to be honest this one is for each of unique tags i need to see what this is about yeah yeah anyways uh yeah they have different advanced setting for different type of 
context you want. Um, so this is how we define a particular content type which you want, and then we can define a particular uh, objects of that content type. If I want an article, suppose I can add a new article or change article which are already there. And stuff like that. This is the basic thing which I guess a person publishing an article would be, would be more familiar with this instead of writing a markdown language. So, and from what I remember, the content is also based on markdown. Yeah, it uses markdown to define stuff. Uh, yeah. So, but I don't know if uh, the one Tanuj said, which is. What was it? MDX, MXT. I don't remember. Is M M is this M and that the same thing? No, this is pure markdown. That is uh, markdown plus React. Okay. Cool. Curious. Um, well, so one of the nice things about this visual. So it's kind of funny that the collection of individuals who are on the call. Um, are all capable, clearly you are all capable of writing like a blog post in Markdown, right? So, yeah. so you might say, well, th so why do we need the strappy UI um, since, you know, and um, I mean, one, I mean, I think you can try, you can probably answer that with a couple of things. One, there might be others who come through who aren't as comfortable, you know, so they might, this might be better, but then um, there's a bunch of other reasons why it, make sense to use Strapi, and that's um, because um, just even as you're writing down Markdown and trying to make sure your image sits properly and things that the ability to preview it real quick, oh, that's nice without yeah, having to. The ability or the um, notion that one post looks really similar to another post looks really similar to another, that we're all using consistent styles and that we're not and I'm really guilty of this is like, you know, making up some new style for um, a given post or to make sure that the image fits in a certain way. And that inconsistency is maybe not the best. So when we use Strapi, that will help with consistency. Um, uh, like one example of this is the notion that in a few different places I've included, um, YouTube videos, and there's a bunch of ways to embed a video into a site. Um, which leads me to my question, like, d does it, do you know what support this has for embedding uh, like a YouTube video? Oh, uh, no, I don't. Uh, we can add a link, but now nah, I guess what we can do over here is we can go to content type builder itself and we can add one more uh, option itself if we want someone to add one or two videos itself right something like a small text and we can convert it itself to a link or something like a video and then we can hard code it to the gatsby side itself that this particular if this particular uh, type is available then make a video attach it right yeah the, yeah um, when when you're done i'll show you guys something that well or i guess i'll just say that um, yeah one of the ways in which we can expose a youtube video on the current site is to um is to just have a when you have a hyperlink that includes youtube.com and the you know like youtube in the uh, the hyperlink um, URL. There's a, we're using a, a Lightbox JavaScript library that will read through all the elements on the page, see if there's a hyperlink that points to YouTube, and if it does, it will create this nice little uh, Lightbox effect. I'll send you guys an example so you can see it. Um, but that was something that we haven't been using. Oh, thank you, Ishida. So, oh, she had to drop. Um, that was something that we weren't using in a consistent way. And so hopefully through use of Strappy, Strappy will be consistent with the, you know, these, these mechanics.
yeah, we can add instruction to this if someone is unknown to the fact that if they add a markdown over here, they can it will bring up a YouTube pop up or something like that. There are means to change that too. True. Uh, Couple questions for you for like for next week or kind of as you're continuing here, and that is, <clears throat> um, I guess I'd be curious to know. Oh, that's great! The bulk actions, huh? huh. Hmm. I'd be curious to know what the uh, what's all possible when you create a new field type and there's a there's like a, I think it said the dynamic zone, or the custom something something. Um, as you get further into this, like the component and the dynamic zone, those two look intriguing. That media field type, it says v videos in it as well. And so I wonder. Yeah, but it will store uh, videos itself in the back end. So oh, if we want to do that, surely we can do that. But... Right. Okay. But okay, yeah, it just sort of what, what's all possible with that dynamic zone? Like, what, what is that? How does it? Uh, I have not yet seen what dynamic zone is. <laughs> sure, yeah. So for just cool. messing around, basically. Yeah, no, no, no. Or actually, um, I, I meant to preface that with like, hey, as, as you get in further, like next week or, or whenever, um, it'd be, I'd be curious to know. Yeah, sure. Uh, what else? Huh. That's cool. So you can define maybe even your own, add a new component, your own emote, your own icons, your own, huh. Okay, this is, this is good. This is probably it. I, I suspect we're just kind of scratching the surface, especially as you consider, like uh, as you look through some of the plugins and kind of the marketplace, um, there's probably a whole nother world over there. <laughs> there are not lots of plugins over there to be honest oh really oh okay um, all of them are already pre-installed and yeah they are good plugins but yeah basic you know, plugins which you need the email uh plugin do you know i mean that, that um this should work for us considering that we're running a strappy server uh, I, it's something I'd be curious to to know more about how that works. Okay. Yeah. Um, a nice. Yeah, and, they uh, do give ability to send emails, I guess. Mass emails. Proper time. I dread. I don't remember. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, I'll see that again. Nice. Nice. This is good. This just really helps me. Um, uh, Shivai, while we've got you, um, and, and as we hit like the top of the time, uh, any, I think we lost him. But so Shivai, if you see this recording, we're looking for the mega menu in case you have one. Okay. Uh, anything else that we that we missed today. As we look toward next week, uh, so recognizing Dhruv and Josh and Tanuj and anyone else and McCool, anyone else who has got exams, like yeah, exams come first. Um, some, some things and questions to maybe look into when you need a break from the exam is no, I have my exams go to whoever my exams go to. Oh you're good. Okay. Good, good. All right. Okay. Um, you you sounded slightly less stressed in your voice. It sounded uh, <laughs> um I think it can be a network issue. Oh okay. Yeah, no, in my sarcat it's also an issue where my sarcasm doesn't make it through the network either. No, but you good. Good school's off for you, so um now that summer's over, you can start to enjoy it. Um, Drew and uh, Tanush. Hey, wait, here's, here's a, an item that, that's probably understood enough. Um, Tanuj, what you did with the blog post and stuff, that, that's fantastic. That, that's awesome. There's something that jumps out to me as being kind of an, um, an easier uh, 
component to maybe tackle would be is the footer, I guess like, I mean, not that we need to prioritize that or anything, but anyway, the, the footer seems like uh, something to take a look at. Um, and then I don't know, the, I guess to news, it, the, the question starts to become like, we are gonna have a number of, of collections. <clears throat> and to, to Drew's point, uh, we, you know, in Strapi, we'll probably create new data models or new collections, one for blog, one for uh, a project, one for a program, like things that map pretty consistently to what we have in the current site. Um, and I guess my, my question is, or, or, or the thinking there is that, that I assume we'll, we'll probably want similar Uh, components for kind of like what we have for a blog. We're going to want something fairly similar for projects, programs. Kind of, kind of like the. So here's projects. Do you want at the end to be every? Uh every content to be there on Strapi and edited over there and then updated everywhere else? Am I getting that hint? Um, I, um, I don't, I'm ignorant as to all, like my, my intuition is that if we're gonna use Strapi, then um, the, then you wanna push and drive sort of m much of what we do to go through there think that it would be naive to assume that everything would be through there in part because some things might be updated automatically um, or because we're going to be inviting people to update the landscape and when they do we want for them to update their data you know about their projects and we're not going to hand them a strappy login not because we would be opposed to that because we can lock down their permissions to do what they need to do but because it just wouldn't be the norm. We would, you know, they, they would be um, expecting to update that in GitHub. So, oh. I guess what we can do is we can start with a, a minor uh, dependency on Strapi, like in a website, something like a small thing. Let's say blog posts or something. Blog posts or something. And if it goes well, then we can replicate it to other sites itself. Even Jekyll if you want. Right. Okay. That makes it makes sense. Um Shivai. Yeah. yeah, hello. Hey Shivai. Yeah, I've I've been having a lot of really bad internet. That is why I've been reconnecting and again again. <laughs> We've been uh I, so you came back just in time to to ask you um, whether yeah, I was there. Or, I was there earlier also, but my internet uh, I've, I've had restarted during the meeting itself at least three four times. Did it? Okay, I I, I saw you. I thought I yeah. Um. So last time we talked, uh, it sounded like you had some success, kind of identifying what you thought would be a good, a decent mega menu to source from, and then. Um, it, uh, um, any other, any other progress or, or yeah. Uh, yes. So I've implemented that in the latest build that is, uh, that was done a few days back. I just give me one minute. Uh, just a minute. Yeah, five minutes. Uh, so the one that was done a few days back by Mukul, I, I had also integrated that in that if, so um, probably I'll right now I'm on my uh, mobile internet because I've come from my mobile. So once I uh, if if I'm once I connect back to my internet, um, I'll create a pull request if that's fine. Or nice, yeah, yeah, um, nice. And did you did you, yeah good 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 yeah I'm eager to see what it looks like. I did. So I edited the navigation uh, dot js. So basically. What they had done in this layer five ng one was they had created like a data.json file that has all the elements of the navigation. 
so i changed that to have uh, not just uh, the so like you know like we have on strappy on the left hand side we have all our um, all our uh, like page like item list and on the right hand side we have the images so i sort of integrated that that we can have like a link uh, like two big urls because you know for each and every mega menu we can let's say there are blogs we can have two featured blogs on the left hand side and some relevant links on of the blog on the on the right hand side similarly for let's say for um, our uh, programs we can have like the two main programs and list of all the programs so it's it's sort of similar to component is similar to how we have it for um, this strapi site nice that's cool yeah i get what you i get what you mean you got a whole collection but maybe two of them you're highlighting and showing a, a, like a yeah so it's completely modular because since they have provided a json uh, like format uh, so we can directly you know um, add whatever we would want uh, to that collection Huh. Cool. Okay. Okay. Cool. Nice. Uh, well, uh, thanks, Shivai. Thanks, guys. Any? I guess. I guess we're at time. Anybody have other updates? Hey Lee, is there anything like I can do as I had gone through Gatsby and GraphQL and like I have sufficient knowledge, so I think I can move on to. A, some minor thing or yeah that's a great yeah josh thanks for asking the uh semi randomly one thing that jumps out to me as um as mo moderately straightforward is the footer uh that the, that component on the new site that Oh, boy, I just even glanced at it, but like, it's probably fine. Like the styling of it is probably about right. Like, I don't, you know, we'll, we'll see eventually, but right now the links that they have, we, we need to displace those with our own, uh, you know, our own links. And so if you look between the current layer five IO footer, and the content that it has, and yeah, if you were to try to um, update the existing Gatsby component for the footer. That that seems like a good. If I were you, I, I would suggest. Well, I don't know. It doesn't really matter. I guess I, I was going to say to like make a backup or take a copy of the existing footer component. Um, because you be, because if you're like me, you might screw it up and then have to revert. But. That seems like a, or, or what, what, what do you think about that? Oh, sure. Okay. Nice. Yeah, that's, that's good. Cool. Um, it's coming together. I can't wait for you guys to be done with your exams. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you too, huh? <laughs> Nice. Oh, thanks, for this, guys. We'll, we'll see you guys next week. Yeah. Bye. Okay. Bye, guys. Bye, all. Okay. Bye. 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 Hey.